Yeah, hi peeps, it's Tess on the old squat box once again. And uh, I'm getting pretty sick of listening to politicians continue to make these sweeping statements of mor moral uh, rightness and moral imperative and you know uh, the need for the world, they keep saying, the world to step in in Syria and stop the, these uh, you know, poison gas and chemical weapons being used on its populace. Uh, a thousand people were gassed. A hundred thousand people have died in Syria. Apparently, the first hundred thousand didn't matter. You know, getting blown up, crushed by buildings collapsing on them, shot and ble bleeding out. Captured, tortured, chopped up with machetes. That doesn't seem, you know, to be enough of a moral sort of imperative for the the world to, to sort of do something about. You know, for over two years now, we've watched Syria collapse into the state that it's in, and there was no moral out outrage from the British or the U.S. Uh, you know, politicians at the time. No, they seen it as a normal war. Or take the world as we find it. They keep saying, you know. But apparently 1,000 people being gassed, is, that's, that's the red line, you, you can't cross that, you know. But even if that is the moral red line that we, we choose, you know, our diplomats or our politicians choose as, as the red line that can never be crossed, you know. Uh, well, what I've got to say is, that then why don't you actually do what you, you, you say in rhetoric but actually don't mean? And that is the world should get together and uh, through diplomatic pressure, or if it needs to be military pressure, the world should do it. And that means getting the United Nations to step in. Not just the US, not just fucking Britain, not just fucking, you know, two or three countries in Europe and the US comping together and saying we have the moral authority because we think it's bad, you know. You would have to, in my opinion, use uh, what politicians are supposed to be good at. That is supposed to be their job. Diplomacy. Um, I don't believe that uh, you will solve any of these problems in the Middle East through you know, attrition, and, uh, uh, through arms, through invasion, through supporting armed conflict. The only way to get rid of armed conflict is, is to get a ceasefire and, and you know, separate the, the, the fighting forces and bring them to the, the negotiating table. If that means forming a United Nations army, you know, if that means somehow forcing China and Russia to, to, you know, support that kind of thing through, you know, giving them diplomatic sort of, you know, benefits, you know, give Russia a, a warm water port on, on the Mediterranean, uh, give China whatever it's looking for, rights to fucking buy oil from, you know, certain countries at Iran, you know, legally, rather than them having to smuggle it out. You know, if, if that's the sort of diplomatic way you have to go, then I would say go that way. That's the, that's the, the right course of action we should take. I don't believe that any military strike, even if it's only for a day or two days or three days, you know what I mean? I don't think it's going to make any difference in Syria whatsoever. For all you know, the first time you fire a rocket into Syria, Syria is going to fire some uh, Scud missiles at fucking Iran. Uh, at at uh, Israel, and Iran and Hezbollah might attack Israel, like they, they did when we were fighting with Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein fired Scud missiles. We had to protect Israel. Oh, Israel, Israel, Israel. No, well, are we not thinking about that now? Is you, the U.S., not worried that that might be the consequence of attacking Israel, uh, uh, Syria? Now that Israel is going to be attacked, it could very well be the outcome, uh, and. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think it's um, it's not a risk we should take. The whole area of the Middle East that we're talking about here has been at war to one extent or another for, for 2,000 years, you know. And it's not something that gets solved by blowing up a tanker, you know destroying a few airfields, it just, it, it, that's senseless to me. I mean, it, it doesn't stop the war that's still going on in Syria. 
and it just gives them um, a, a further burden upon the populace once eventually when the war, uh, the war is over there, the fighting's over, a further sort of pressure upon them and burden to, to rebuild. I'm sick and tired of seeing this recommendation of destruction as being the, the, the path to peace and security. It's, it just never is. It just never is. I do believe that the way that we should be going is the diplomatic, the diplomatic route. And you could have a diplomatic route where you send in a United Nations Peace Force, separating the, the, the two sides, or the five sides, or how many sides there are, you know, and forcing them to stop shooting at each other. And I don't mean a United Nations force like we, we had in Boston that sat back and went and bomb each other over our heads. Basically, you know, it's a ceasefire, a diplomatic ceasefire. You, you give them sucker, you know, you, you help each side with, you know, medical and food. But in order to get that medicine and food from us and to help them to, to recover and, and have a peaceful negotiating period, they, they all have to stop shooting. All of them have to stop shooting. And you also have to, if, if needs be, that red line has been crossed, chemicals were used, you have to drag some of them into a criminal court, a war tribunal, something like that. But that's not just on, you know, the side of the gas, that should be on the side of anybody who can be proven to have murdered and butchered, uh, done any ethnic cleansing on their side, and that would include, include the, the, the so-called freedom forces. Uh, some of them have, create, uh, have, have uh, perpetrated crimes as well during this, this fighting and they should be tracked down and, and brought to justice as well. Only through both sides being seen to be punished can you get both sides to understand that yeah okay uh, it's worth negotiating a, a peace settlement since both being treated equally badly or equally good <laughs> whatever way you want to look at it uh, but I don't believe that uh, the US or the UK and France firing some rockets into Syria is going to have any beneficial fucking, you know, uh, effects. And besides that, I don't think anything should happen until after the United Nations, uh, you know, investigators who are in there investigating the, the, the chemical, uh, you know, attack. I don't think anything should happen until their report is finalised and handed over to the UN and then it should be discussed, fully discussed, both in the UN and the British Parliament and the US Senate and House, you know, and, uh, and in, the Fran in France's Parliament, Germany's Parliament. Once the UN gets that report, it should be distributed to these, these uh, governments and they should have to discuss fully what the report says and any outcome which is um, put forward by the, you know, in a future action that's put forward by the, the, the United Nations report. But I do really think that the way to deal with this is a, a diplomatic course. Uh, I do hate the idea that you know, somebody has used you know, gas to kill you know, a large amount of people in a short period of time. But in two years, there's 100,000 people died in Syria. And if you're going to be morally outraged by the gas, you should also be morally outraged by that 100,000 deaths. And I, I really don't see how you can make a comparison between the two and be more outraged, morally or otherwise, over one than you are about the other. Uh, and if you are then, like the, the guy who was, the MP was speaking at the House of Commons today, you should uh, have to t step back and analyse your own conscience and your own moral ineptitude to, to deal with the, the problems of the world in, in a I would say an intellectual manner, you know. I think any amount of deaths for any religious or financial cause it is outrageous and uh, I think that's that's where I finish. I just suffice to say I don't want to see the US, the UK, France, Germany any of them 
fire rockets into Syria at the moment over these thousand deaths. We need to wait till we get that report for the UN investigators and then we need to actually do something which is the world taking action. If this guy broke a, a, a law, a rule that cov covers the world, that then it should be the world that takes action and not a few individual countries who, who feel that they would be morally seen to be neglecting their, their, what, their, their, their job as world policemen or some fucking thing. I mean, no. It's, it's not your job to step in there and do do something that everybody's supposed to be partaking in, you know. You get the world to help, you get the world to, to sanction it, or you do nothing and then you can step back and say, well, we're not morally bankrupt, it's the world that's morally bankrupt. You know what I mean? You can defend your, your moral outrage that wasn't being sated with being able to blow somebody else up, you know. You can, you can solve that by saying, well, we weren't the only people not to do anything, you know. And I know people say, well, if, if good people stand by and do nothing, you know, then the, the horror continues. But even if you go there and you bomb a couple of rocket, you know, firing station platforms and, and bomb a couple of airfields, and then you stop, the, the world isn't changed. Syria's still at war, in a year's time there'll be another 50,000 people dead, and nothing will have changed. You know, it, it, it doesn't make any fucking sense to fire a couple of rockets and then say, oh, we'll, we're morally okay now because we, we bombed a couple of things, you know? Well, that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's fucking, it's Republican fucking thinking that, you know what I mean? Anyway, as long as you fucking van motherfuckers.